<laughs> All right, we are live. Woohoo! Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, welcome to another edition of the Ultimate Career Leap. So I'm just going to wait to make sure that the notification has gone live on everything. Let's see, am I notified yet on LinkedIn? We're live on Facebook. I can see that. Oh, so it's live on Facebook. Perfect. Perfect. So anybody feel free to hop on, say hi, let us know you're here. Hmm, interesting. I'm not getting anything yet for LinkedIn. But let me check. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Now I got it. All right. Anybody feel free to hop on, say hi, let us know you're here. Sorry, I got to turn off my volume. Okay. All right. So, good morning, good afternoon. Hi, Nicholas from North Carolina. Glad to have you. All right. So, I'm VJ. Welcome to another edition of Ultimate Career Leap. Um, today, I did it a little differently. Usually, I'm at the nighttime, but we're doing an afternoon edition because I have Chanel, the intuitive reinvention strategist, with us. And she's based in Sicily. So, we adjusted for her time zone. Um, hi from Kansas City, Tiffany. How you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, Chanel, um, introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. So, hi everyone. As VJ said, I'm an intuitive reinvention strategist, and what that just means is I help entrepreneurs, influencers, world changers to ditch burnout and pivot in their business so that they do something that comes from their soul, something that gives them fulfillment, that helps them make a lot of money, but while giving them real bliss and joy. And so I help people like change from what they used to do to something new. And most times the new thing, it's creative, it's out of the box, it's scary, it's their next level, but it's exactly what their soul wants to experience. And so that's what I do. So um, Chanel is very good at what she does. Like we've worked together uh, briefly in the past and I love her. Like she was very helpful in helping me kind of get my vision out and see where I was going with things. So I thought she'd be a great addition um, as, a, as a guest to help you guys also, you know, if you're trying to figure out what to do next, you know, what's your sole purpose. Um, She's the one. So what do you consider? So let's talk about that. That sole purpose. Like, I love that. Like, that's your phrase. I always yeah. hear you saying that. So like, what does sole purpose mean to you? So here's the thing, right? We grow up in a society where we're taught how to be. We're taught what to do, what to believe, how to dress, how to act based on our family, based on religion, based on what people's preconceived notions of who we are. But the truth is that before we even came on earth or souls, we have a soul within us, that piece of us that will never die. And that soul came to this earth with a purpose. We all have a calling and a purpose. It doesn't matter um, where, what religion you're from, what country you're from, whether you're male, female, it doesn't matter what, who you are, we all have a soul. And the, the thing is when we come here, you know, we, we initially have this calling on our lives and we grow up in a family that says, oh, women should do this and girls shouldn't do that or boys should be like this and, oh, you can't make enough money or don't do that. And little by little, we become brainwashed as to what we are capable of and what we are allowed to do. And our sole purpose is really just us waking up to who we truly are and why we are here and what our divine calling is and the thing about a divine calling or a soul purpose is that when you're doing that thing, there's a sense of fulfillment. And it's not just for you where you are benefiting, maybe in terms of um, influence or fame or money, but it's something that when you do that thing, people are transformed. People are transformed. And mm. it ripples out into the world and you inspire people with it. You're not trying to be inspiring. You just inspire people because you are doing your soul work. And it, it just ins it makes people think, wow, that's possible. You know, so when someone follows their, their soul purpose, what happens is we just have a more fulfilling and happier life. And I think one of the reasons why I even became so passionate about this topic was growing up, you know, my mom passed away when I was 15 years old. So VJ, you and I share that, not sharing mm -hmm. our mothers. 
But my mom passed away when I was 15 years old. And I just remembered looking at the impact she had, right? How many right. lives she touched. And she wasn't trying to. She was just being her true, authentic, divine, powerful self. And so many people's lives were touched. And not just that, but I saw on the back end of that, my father believing that, okay, as a single father to two daughters, I need to sacrifice myself and do a job I hate to take care of these kids. And I just watched him every day hating his job. And I thought to myself, you know, this man has, is, he's the smartest man I know. He's the most talented man I know. He's such an amazing father and amazing, was an amazing husband. And I look at all of that, I'm like, and here he is not living his life call, his life purpose. And I was just like, I don't ever want to not live my calling. Right, Because I right. witnessed the both sides of the coin. And, you know, I began to allow myself to do what I wanted to do at an early age, even when my classmates would say, Shamil, that's what you're going to do. That's, you know, like, you know, I just, I just found myself doing it my way. And I got so many, so much recognition, so much impact in money, like everything that I desired that everyone else was chasing, it was chasing me, but I was just happy all the way, you know, just like doing what I was called to do. Right, right. So basically, like, instead of chasing after your dreams, you were just catching them because they were coming to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So in case you guys don't know from her accent, she's Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> but where did you, like, you You moved around a bit. You went from Jamaica to London, right? Girl, I've lived in seven countries. I've lived in Jamaica, wow. I've lived in Canada, Denmark. Poland, like random, um, the UK, and I'm here now in Italy, living in Italy. So I've lived so much in Portugal. I've lived in so many places. France, I lived in Paris at one point. So yeah, I've so, lived everywhere. So. so for you, like going on that journey, living in all of these places, was it also because of your sole purpose? Was it like just getting opportunities or were you just like randomly like, you know what, that country, I'm gone? Sole purpose, 100%. You see, here's, you see, nice. when you say yes to your sole purpose, it's going to be scary. It's going to be also be a comfort zone. Like when right. you think about Jamaican people and maybe some Caribbean people will be watching this, no Jamaican says they want to go to Poland. No one says, <laughs> I'm going to move to Poland. Like, in fact, like, it's, it's like, okay, we understand England because, you know, it speaks English and we understand, right. um, you know, the US and Canada, but like who goes to Denmark <laughs> from Jamaica and like, so what happens is you're, you're following your soul's calling and your soul purpose is going to take you leaps and bounds beyond your comfort zone and stretch you. And it, it will really stretch you. And so, yeah, right. all of those, tra those travels and stuff came from me following my soul purpose and just doing crazy stuff that everybody else said, oh, my God, this girl is ridiculous. And I just did it anyway. And I wouldn't take any of it back. <laughs> So, so what was like one crazy thing that you did that was part of your sole purpose that people were like, really, Chanel, really, really? I mean, oh gosh, multiple things. I can start with, first of all, I, I started out as a social worker and that in itself, people in Jamaica, we didn't have a strong social work presence. Like we don't have child protection, but we do, but it's not like the way it's, it is in the U.S., and so when you think about social work, you think about the movies, you watch like CIS and like, you know, LAPD shows and these things where you have, um, you know, like the come and the take away the children. And so we never have a, had, a, had a good concept of social work back then. And I just remembered my grandmother expected me to be a lawyer. My father expected me to be law a lawyer. All my neighbors, everybody at church, like everybody's like, this girl, she can talk. She's just going to be a lawyer. And I was like... <laughs> No, I'm gonna be a social worker, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be a social worker." And you know, that was like the first like rebelling kind of when it came to the calling. But the next one was when I said I was going to start my own business and work from home, and everybody's like, "You belong in corporate, in like in like an office with like suits." And I mean. They just, they, you know, like they didn't get it because I started right. my online business 2014 when now it's more popular and now with the coronavirus quarantine, people are working from home. But 2014, 
like I just remember my grandma calling me and she's like, Shani, are you surviving? How are you surviving? <laughs> like she's she's freaking out that I'm not eating, like like I'm I'm like I'm desperate. Right, because you because you didn't have a job. You you were working from home. Job, that right? meant you were you just were unemployed. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one another one is like when I decided, oh, I was gonna charge thousands of dollars for my offers, people are like, nobody's gonna buy that because by this time I had all my friends were social workers. Right. And in social work, there is luck, there is a budget, there is limitation. <laughs> and they're like, nobody's going to pay you thousands of dollars. That's ridiculous, you know? So there have been people who have been naysayers at every single turn. But I don't listen to them because I just, I'm, I think I'm stubborn, but it's, it's good because I learn what I need to do. I trust my intuition and that's why I'm an intuitive reinvention strategist. Because I don't just put people into containers or tell people to go do this thing and do that thing. I actually channel for them and help them to channel for themselves so they understand their intuitive voice and what needs to take place for their soul. Not just fear and what mommy says and what the government says and right. oh my God, there's, you know? Right. And that's a good thing. I think so many people are afraid to do things because of other people. Right. It's like if you really look at some of the fears you have, are they actually your fears or is it fear that somebody else put on you? Yeah. No. And and I think people don't really stop to think about that. Yeah. In my, in my work with my clients, I mean, I actually learned this from Florence Scovel Shin in the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It. If you guys haven't read that book, definitely check it out. But it's something that I really believe wholeheartedly and I say it to all my clients <laughs> or I use it with my clients. Anytime they come to me with a problem, it's always, and whose voice is that? You know, and who mm. are you afraid of disappointing? Or who, when someone, like I remember last week we had a call with, with my mastermind ladies and I was saying to them, you know, somebody was saying she was feeling overwhelmed. And I'm like, who are you afraid of disappointing? You know, overwhelmed, the fear of being overwhelmed or fear of failing. It's literally fear of what mommy, daddy, my husband, whoever is gonna think. It's not really your true, your truth. Mm, that's that's a that's a good point. Yeah, like I think it's it's interesting that you say it that way because so many times it is that's the truth. Like you're afraid of letting somebody else down, but when they list the people they're afraid of letting down, they're never in the list. True. Like I know for me, sometimes the only person I've really feared letting down was me. Like I, I didn't really worry about if I let my parents down or if I let my grandparents, the cousins, the aunts, the uncles. It was just like I'm letting myself down. Yeah. But you that's know, and when I think, you're walking your soul purpose is when you think yeah. about yourself, letting you not letting yourself down. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's see. Matthew Perkins joined. Hey, Matthew. He says, loving this powerful story. And Vicky's watching us on Facebook. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> so that's Vicky Gould. If you guys don't know, um, I had her on a few weeks back as well. And she's how I met Chanel. I meet a lot of my coaches through Vicky, actually. <laughs> I'm really um, so I'm BJ, so. Yeah, yeah, she's Actually, the one. If you look for that um, live session, it's the one we did about storytelling. Vicky's amazing. I yeah, Vicky was good for that. Um, so yeah, so that's interesting. So huh, let's talk quarantine real quick, right? Because you had mentioned that in something that you said. So you're in Italy, and you guys have been quarantined. What are you on day eight now? Yeah, we're over. We're like a week in now. It's like okay. second nature now. <laughs> <laughs> we're well adjusted so are you one of those people that have been like outside on the balcony singing with the neighbors or is that not happening where you are no so where i am i'm not in, a, in an area where there's a balcony to sing to people because okay. my balcony like overlooks the beach so if i'm singing i'm singing to the fishes in the ocean but 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 what we've been doing is um it's funny carlos parents carlos my husband his family video like his father video calls us and we like talk like mm -hmm. on video call the whole family's video calling because you know we aren't able to see them so that's one of the ways we're connecting you know with with them the thing is the area that i live in it's a beach area so in this time of year there's nobody really on this side because okay. everybody you know it's, it's a touristic kind of vibe and it's not there's no tourists right now you know <laughs> there's, there's right no right right yeah. Okay. So I saw you had created like um, a survival guide for the quarantine. No, 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 no. A thrival guide. A thrival guide. I'm sorry. My bad. I was like, wait, that's not what she, how she said it. That's right. She's teaching you how to thrive. So yeah. what's the, um, 
what's your uh, your website for that? Like if anybody wants to download this thrival guide, where can they okay, get it? Okay, so it's Chanel, S H A N E I L dot com forward slash quarantine. And it's gonna be the first button on the page. You don't even have to opt in, no email necessary. Just download it, dive in, have fun. You know, I created it with the aim of really shifting people from the fear to kind of be more playful. So you'll see like in it, there's three categories. You have soul, sensuality, and success. So the soul one, doing some reflecting, doing some spring cleaning, you know, sensuality, really connecting with your partner or yourself and, okay. you know, getting dressed up for no reason. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and then you look know, good in the house. That's right. Yeah, and you have the success part, which one of the, the suggestions in there actually came from you, VJ, which was people can go ahead and write their book, which is great that the key is even on here as well, too. Right. <laughs> you know, use it for yeah, when I saw that list, it, You know what, when I saw that list, I think I had just talked to Vicky, and that's what made me say, write a book, right, to yeah. add that to the list, you know, different things. Um, so, yeah, that's good. Like, so for anybody who's being self-quarantined and you're not sure what to do, there's a guide to how to thrive. Yeah. You know, and it's just fun, it's like hearted, it, you know, it, it has just three categories, go through, and step by step go through, do some of the activities, have fun with it. And on that page as well, there's a flash sale because I believe in shine in quarantine, which is really quarantine, but you know, kind of trying to rhyme here. Um, and there's a flash sale where some of my best selling courses that people rave about all the time, I just have them there for like up to 90% off. So if you're thinking to study something, to do, those are there as well. Nice, nice, nice. But you can get the you can get the PDF without going through any of those. Just get the PDF, enjoy it. And if you feel called to do any other courses, you can do that too. Yes. And Vicky said, write a book. She raised her hand. Like, yes, please write yes. a book. Because she also helps people write their best sellers. Especially exactly. for their business. So she helped yes. me with my book. I am a two-time best-selling author and I credit it to Vicky. Vicky is the one that helped me with my book, with both of my books. <laughs> Nice, nice. So, you know, in one of my posts, I talked about even though we're doing social distancing, we don't have to not actually be social, you know, and how to network more remotely and such. And um, that's like a great example of this. Right. So, like, I met Chanel through Vicky and they were doing a live together. And that's how you know we met. And I don't know if you guys, if you're new to me, you might not know this story. If you, if you follow me, you know that I hate it to do videos. And I was just like, I need to do it. And, you know, I said, I would, I asked my one coach, just be like, you tell me how I need to hear it so I can go do videos. It was Chanel. Chanel was DJ. <laughs> like our like, second live together. She's like, DJ, go do a live. When we get off, 30 yeah. seconds, introduce yourself and tag me in it. So I know you did it. <laughs> I was like, and look at you okay. now. You're like, right? You're like, I know it, it cracks me up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. Guys, she, this live stream is also on LinkedIn. And I had to be asking VJ, wait, you go live on LinkedIn? How do you do that? So now the, the student has become the teacher. Like, <laughs> that's how epic this is right here. Yes, yes, yes. I know first I was only streaming to LinkedIn and now I'm doing LinkedIn and Facebook. But that was honestly because of my guests. You guys have more of a link, um, a Facebook following than I do. Like, my following is LinkedIn. So yes, Matthew says he remembers my first time on Janiyad's live. Yeah, that was the first time I went live with somebody was when Janiyad had live. So, and then I applied and I got live. Um, <laughs> Vicky says I'm a pro now. Thank you, Vicky. And to grab those yes, courses, they're so good. Yes, I know Vicky grabbed your um, the burnout one you have. Yes, the ultimate burnout cure. Good. Yes, yes. So if you feel like you're burning out in your business, She's got the fix for you for that and one. And not just business. It's like it's it's business, but in life. Because the things that you learn in that course are not just about entrepreneurs. You know, I made it for entrepreneurs, but it's really for people. So if you're burnt out, I remember there's one of the ladies who has taken it. And she has like three kids and like one on the way. And, you know, it's just like it, it doesn't necessarily restrict you to having a business. If you feel burnt out, overwhelmed, this is going to get to the core of, of what's going on. Good, good, good. Yes, yes, yes. So you work with people. And Delia is here too. Hi, Delia. Oh, we got more people coming in. Perfect, perfect. And I see Milos is on. Hi, Milos. He's one of my new clients. Um, Hi, happy to have you. So, um, so you work with people with their sole purpose, and you said something about channeling. Give us like a little sample of what it's like to work with you. Like, what does that mean? Yes. So, for me, intuition is a huge part of how I work. 
So what I do is help people to pivot, okay, to that next chapter, whether it means you're charging more, whether it means you're doing something completely different, whether it means, you know, you're stepping outside of your comfort zone and just flipping things on its head with your career and changing how you're going about your life. That's <laughs> what I do. So the how I do it is I actually get divine downloads. So I will be like, I'll be talking to someone and they'll be sharing their frustration and I will actually receive like a, an intuitive knowing as to what that person is really saying and what direction to like direct them into. But even outside of that, because with my one, that's what I do with my one-on-ones. But what I've created is a way in which people can do that for themselves. Because I feel like, you know, we, we live in a world where we get addicted sometimes to always searching for the answer. And we don't realize that your sole purpose, you were born with that. Like that was something you were born with. So what I try to do now, especially for me in this chapter of my life and my business, is to not just channel for people and help guide them. No, no, no. Right now, it's about me helping you to be able to do it for yourself. So in five years, you're, tr you're transitioning again. You can go back to the work and, and get that clarity. You know, oh, in 10 years, you can go back to the work and get that clarity. You know, or you're talking to your husband or you're talking to your sister and they're freaking out. You know a process that you can take them through to help them get clarity as well. So it's something that's transferable. And it took me a while before I was able to put it in a container that was transferable. Because for a long time, I, I didn't understand how to transfer that ability or that, that process. And so for like two years, I just kept coaching people one-on-one -on -one and mm. testing them as my little guinea pigs, um, seeing how I could like use this process in a way that is transferable. And now we've gotten to that point. And I just think everyone needs to understand that it's not only to just rely on others, it's to realize that you are truly a powerful person and a powerful soul. And you're here for a calling, with a calling and for a purpose. And I want you to be able to pull on yourself and trust yourself. You know, that's, 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 that's what I'm really pushing people to do now. That's how I'm doing it. Great. That's great. That's great. And so Chanel's the type of person, like she'll be on social media all the time and then she'll take like a two, three month break. And then she comes back like out of nowhere. And it's just like, I'm back. And, pull. and like, she has all of this, like Vicky and I laugh about this all the time. She's like, there she goes again. She like was gone for three months and she's back and she's got all this yeah. stuff going, you know? And yeah. it's like, she really is aligned with what she's supposed to be doing. She'll figure it out, you know? And um, I think for a lot of us, we're afraid to figure it out, you know, or we're afraid of, of disappointing other people of taking this leap of having the risk, but like the reward is so much more. You know, and like, and I was like, asked that, like, how do you do, how do you handle the risk? And I'm like, I think about what it's like if I don't take the risk. Yeah. But it's funny you mentioned that example because yesterday, Carla and I, we were, you know, after we were setting, settling down for the evening, we were watching some YouTube and this YouTuber, she was saying, guys, I've been gone for a while. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, I go for a while for a lot of times and I'm not apologizing. I know when I go for a while, I'm working on some stuff. I'm working on some stuff. I'm working on myself. I'm not apologizing for that. Like, if you miss me, I'm back. You're welcome. I'm here, you know? So I That's true. Apologize, you know, but I don't anymore. And you used to like tell us when you were going to be gone. Like, you don't really say like, I'm taking a break. It's just like, she takes a break. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny because I feel like so many people always have to announce when they're taking a break from social media. Yeah. Just take a break. Like, take a break. Yeah. And don't don't apologize for taking a break. Just be like, hey, guys, I'm back. Like, why are you sorry? You went and you took care of yourself. You took care of your right. family. You, you got deep into you. You connected with you. You put you first. Like, why are you apologizing for that? We don't apologize. Like, I used to apologize. Right. I will confess. I used to apologize. But I don't anymore because I'm doing... Honestly, when you take a break, you're doing yourself a favor. You're doing the world a favor. Because when yes. you come back, what you're coming back with is going to be of so much more potency than if you had just forced yourself to do it because. Let me do it because people are expecting it. No, it goes back to what you were saying in the beginning, BJ, about being afraid to disappoint others. No, being afraid to disappoint myself. I'm not going to disappoint myself. And self-care is very, very important, you know? 
Right. Definitely. Definitely. Like that self-care, having that faith that all kind of keeps you going and keeps you moving. So you got a testimonial from Vicki. She said, I've worked with Chanel for years, one-on-one -on -one, group and online courses. I get everything of hers. What's the best, what the best thing is, is that the insights and the change happen so fast. <laughs> and it's, you know, that's true because she was talking about doing some kind of shift and she was having that burnout feeling and she did like your course. And the next thing I know, I got like different types of messages from Vicky. I'm like, what just happened? Yeah. She's like, I did Chanel's course and it helped. I was like, oh, okay. Wow. Wow. So Matthew that's said, so that's so true. You have to keep yourself strong and taken care of in order to provide your best value to others. Exactly. Like you can't, you can't serve from an empty cup. You know, like that saying, like you always have to take that time, take that self care. Um, yeah. I don't have to do it. You know, since returning to the country, I'm, I'm like, well, why did I come back? Going on, I feel like I should have stayed in Curacao. Yeah. But like, from when I've come back, I've been busy and I've been running, and I'm like, wait, I just need to rest for a day. Like, yeah. I just needed like over the weekend. I took one day to just relax. I was like, okay, I gotta. Yeah just do me and do some laundry. I was like, wow, I haven't even done my laundry yet. You know, like it was just yeah, everything was just right. You know, you're allowed yeah. to do that. Like if you think I think it, it also makes it easier to help people because yeah. you've done it. You know, you're you're recharged. But also if you think about like in corporate world, you know, like in the corporate world, you get days off, you get holidays off, you get time off, you get vacation leave you get all kinds of different leave and then when you work for yourself you kind of don't give yourself that opportunity and you yes. need it <laughs> like even god rested on the seventh day people <laughs> hello like for, what god hello you know yeah 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 and it's true like that that really helps i mean even for like some of my clients with their careers like people are burning out people are stressed people are tired you know some people even though they have that leave they don't take it yeah. Like you have vacation days. Take take a yeah. day off. It's okay to take and a day I will off. Say, I will even say this. I will add this because there's some people who are taking time off because they're afraid to live their calling. If that's you, do not take a day off. Go live your calling. But if if taking the day off is in service to your calling, honey, then do. And if it's in service to like resting and things like that, then do. But if it's like an excuse to procrastinate, I see you. <laughs> do not do that. Yeah, that, that is very true. So what advice would you give people to navigate those fears of others to help them let those go so that they can live their true calling? You just have to do the thing you're afraid of. If you're afraid that people will judge you for talking about a topic, go on a live stream and talk about the topic. If you're afraid that people will judge you for selling a certain thing or doing a certain thing, you do the thing. Not like mindset work is important, but even after you've done the mindset work, you are still going to have to do the thing. That's the only thing that will make the difference is doing the thing and realizing that, wait, I did not die, you know? And I remember like a part of what I talk about in being an, you know, even a reinvention strategist, I do soul, sensuality, and success. And when I was incorporating the sensuality side in my work back in 2018, I was very scared because I, you know, it's talking about sex seduction and like feminine energy and i was very nervous because i was like oh my god you know like all my people from my my church they're gonna think i'm an abomination and like my father's gonna disown me and youtube is gonna block my videos for being like lewd and i just had to hit the record button and say hello world i talk about this stuff i believe in this stuff if you don't accept it, it was nice knowing you. Bye-bye. If you want to be on the journey with me, let's go. And I just had to do that. And it's so funny because there was not one single hater. Like, I got no bad. <laughs> there's, like, no negative energy on. There's, like, no bad. And I was just that's like, great. I have to do Right, you know? right. So Matt says that's great <laughs> advice. There are 7 billion people on this planet. Do you, and it will resonate with somebody. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's true. I remember when you did that shift in 2018 and you were like, okay, I'm a little nervous, but I'm starting to put out this new content. Yeah. And you said it in like your first video about it. You're like, you know what? I'm doing a shift. I hope you guys yeah. ride with me on the shift, but here we go. Yeah. You know, and it's true. You do like, I didn't want to do video. Yeah. Look where I am now. 
Exactly. You know? You're hosting a TV show. Hello. <laughs> now that was so not on my radar. I will say that. I, that was definitely not on my radar. But yeah, like, I could not really kind of laughs at me about that one. Yeah, but that's what happens when you push through the fear. Yes. Because yes. the thing is, you've always known you were somebody who was meant to serve tons of people. You already knew that, Vijay. You and I know that. Like, even right. before you did video, you knew you were called to touch multiple people's lives. But you were kind of holding yourself back and like, am I ready? Do I know enough? Like, is this, you right. know, you know, I need to have this thing before I can put this website first and this thing. And I was just like, you're enough, you're ready. And when you said yes to yourself and did that video, that's when you kind of said to yourself, I'm ready. And little by little, all the people you interviewed so far and who you will interview started to come into your, your space as not just people you know, but as friends, right? And you can pull on their expertise and, and expand your calling even more. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And that's the power of networking because, I mean, honestly, like all my guests I have, I, I have met through some form of networking or through somebody else, you know, and like we've connected on LinkedIn and um, like my first three guests were people I met on LinkedIn and then we did a Zoom call together. You know, and people are like, oh, networking doesn't work. I'm like, yes, yes, it does. You're doing it wrong if you think it doesn't work. And if you think it's it scary, I'm like, just think of it as bonding. I'm like, throw out that word networking and just call it bonding. You're bonding with yeah. people. And you know, it's interesting and it's too, like, I want to show everyone here who's watching the power of really following your soul purpose and your path. Because many people would say, hey, you need to be on Facebook. You need to be on Facebook. You need to be on Facebook. And even though VJ is on Facebook, but she's crushing it over on LinkedIn, right? So there's not one <laughs> way, just because there's people who are saying you need to do this or you need to do that. You don't need to listen to anyone. You need to decide what is your soul's calling and what is your container, your divine container that you thrive in, even if it's scary, like doing a video, and you go full force with it, even if people don't get it. Right. Right. Because there are people that do get it. Yeah. You know, just like you your, your tribe will get it. Your soul yes. people will get it. Yes. Like somebody, um, a, a young lady had asked me this during uh, the the virtual home conference I did last week. And she was like, you know, what's, you know, when you're getting started and like your family doesn't really understand what you're trying to do or this and the other one. And I'm like, worrying about getting support from the wrong people. Yeah. Focus on who actually supports you. And I think that's a major problem. Everybody's like, but I want my family and friends to support me. Okay. But they don't know what you're doing yet. Just whoever yeah. is willing to support you, that's who you get your support from. And don't worry about who's not supporting you because sometimes they're not supporting you because of harm. They just don't know what you actually yeah, do. Yeah, they don't understand. Right. Until they see you doing it and thriving in it, then it's like, oh, is that what you do? Yeah. Like I did a video for um, one of my programs, the one I originally talked to you about, which I still haven't done too much with, but that's another story. And, um, <laughs> don't let me have to kick your butt, VJ. No, no, no. We'll talk. About, we'll talk about that one, we'll talk about that one offline because I, I had shifted some things. I, I just put it on the back burner, but I'm, it's been you know kind of percolating back there. Nobody so I did a video, and I had like some people I know in the video, and one of them was like, "So this is what you do?" I was like, "Yeah, this is what I do." And he's like, "Oh," and it was like a newer friend, so you know, newer connection, and everything. So he really didn't know what I did. But then now he's like, oh, I get it. This is useful. Like, he's like, where were you when I needed help with my career? I was like, well, I'm here now. You know, so it, it's, it is just understanding, like, who gets it and having that, those friends that do get it. Like, my entrepreneurial friends. That's why I'm so close with Vicky. Like, I learned so much from Vicky. Yeah. And she keeps pushing me forward because she works like a freaking machine. She's a beast. Yeah. You know, I'll be like, Vicky, what are you doing today? And she, like, runs off this list. And I'm like, crap, I only got three things and on she, my list. I got to catch up. Fast. Yeah, right? she takes action, man. So I'm like, okay, you know, and I have my other entrepreneurial friends where I'm like, I need to run an idea. Or I'm trying to work through something. Like Matthew, he's one of those people. I'll text him in a heartbeat and be like, I'm trying to figure out this idea. You got some free time? Like, help me run through it. And he's like, hit me with it. You know, and like helping me get the logistics straight. So it's like just having those people that you can reach out to is so important. Oh, we got a question. What would your advice to someone that struggles with their, what would your advice be to someone that struggles with their passion? I find my fingers in so many pies that I lack consistency and direction. I provide value to others in their projects, but do not take care of myself or brand or brand myself well. Okay. So that's to me, yeah? The question is to me, right? 
that's, yeah, 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 the question is to you. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's actually Matt asking that question conversation all the time. So he needs to hear this from somebody else. <laughs> okay, good question. So here's the thing. When you have multiple questions, like I feel you, I also have multiple, just me, multiple questions. And what you have to do is realize that, you know, you have life. Life is not just, like life is now, but you have a life. So everything doesn't have to be done today. So you get to actually say, all right, well, this month, this week, today, I'm focusing on this thing. And you give it your 100% of your effort. And then you can actually put things into sequencing to say, all right, so I'll do this. And then next month, I'll work on this. It's okay to break your, your goals down into actual like chunks, right? So for me, if it, so it was up to me, I would be a billionaire today. I would be a billionaire today. I would have like, uh, like a internet multinational corporation that employs thousands of people all across the globe and I would do it today. But I'm thinking about sequencing. Okay, well, this is what I want to do as phase one. This is what I want to do as phase two. This is what I want to do as phase three. And then I also thought, okay, for example, you see I say I'm a reinvention strategist and I incorporate soul, sensuality, and success. That was that actually came from me just doing all, like taking the time to say, okay, today I'm talking about soul. Okay, today I'm talking about sensuality. Okay, today I'm talking about how you can skyrocket your business. And then I realized, wait a minute, oh, but they all fit together. And so I found a way to fit them together. But I could only do that when I actually took action on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And as I was taking action on one thing at a time, I realized how they were all connected. So for example, I'm multi-passionate, just like you are. I love hair, I love makeup, I love beauty, I like to look cute, you know, and I realized that all those things get to fit into the sensuality aspect of what I do. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so amazing. So I don't, you know, I don't have to like quit this thing and do that. Like I can, I, I'm, I am Chanille and Chanille is the soul, which is like your life calling. And it, it, she is the sensuality, which is like, I'm oh, gorgeous, darling. And she is the success, which is like money, you know, like whatever, like she's all of it. So, but I, I didn't get here overnight. I had to, when I felt led to speak about soul, I spoke about soul and I gave it a hundred percent. And when I wanted to talk about sexuality and sensuality and femininity, I gave it a hundred percent. And when I talked about success, I gave it a hundred percent. And as I did each of those things to the best of my ability and I gave it my all, I got to see, wait a minute, but it's the same. It's the same. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, right. So just pick one thing now, set a timeline, give it your all give it your all and allow yourself to take steps in all the things that you're passionate about. Listen, you have a whole- That is great whole advice. Life. Thank you. I like that. Does that answer your question, Matthew? I'm refreshing and see if I can, <sighs> okay. I'll wait to see when his comment comes through. But yeah, that's great advice. Like, I think that applies for everybody. You know, you're like, I have into so many different things and no, you can't do them all at once, but you do just have to start with one of them. Yeah. You know, even if it's just like, all right, throw, you know, write them down on a piece of paper, throw it up, whichever one lands yeah. up. Okay, that's the one. Start. <laughs> because it's not like, you, exactly. Even if you pick it out of a hat, but just start and put your all into it because it's not like, you're gonna be chained to that thing for the rest of your life. You will never be able to talk about something else. No, set a timeline, say for this week, I am focusing, and even in business, when it comes to like sales, that's, that's one of the things that I do. I have, like I will say, okay, this month, the focus is this specific program or this specific offer. And I just, like right now, everything is leading to the free quarantine, um, drive during quarantine, time you know pdf everything is leading to that and then that leads to the the, the sale the 90 percent off flash sale that's going on but everything i talk about leads to that right now next week it may be not maybe it will be something else you know right right and i think it's i think a lot of that problem is because of how we see brands like people think well but my brand has to be this one thing yeah and i'm like but think about it like you know um, if you use like an actor, right? There's so many actors out there that are like, I got a fashion line, I'm into beauty, 
I'm doing yeah. accessories. I'm doing, you know, like they do all of these different things. You know, they like I act, I direct, and I got this, that, and the other. So yeah, they're still that person. Like that's still their brand. Like you know, like Gary V talks about his wine. He talks about yeah. TikTok. He talks about media. Like he talks about everything. But I think yeah. we're, we're so like thinking, okay, when I'm building my brand, it has to be this one thing. Yeah. You know, and like even for myself, I'm like some people know me for careers and some people know me for entrepreneurship. It just depends on what circle I'm in. And I just yeah. shift hats. And, and, for some people, and the two of them are linked because people yes. who become entrepreneurs, that is their career path. So it's still yes. career, yeah. you know? So it's like, it doesn't have to be the same way. And, and, I, and I think one a good way to explain it as well is if you think about like fast fashion brands, like if you think about like Fashion Nova or House of CB or any of these online clothing brands, or even Zara, for example, that's a big popular one, you'll see that every few weeks they come up with a new line of clothing right a new you know new outfits okay spring is here okay fall is here like new things it doesn't mean they're not still zara and it's the same with us as humans we're dynamic you know you're not just right. one-sided so if you if you're if you want to incorporate the different aspects of you that's okay gotcha so matt said thank you so much for the detailed and insightful answer it seems like I should let the big picture develop as I pursue each piece that I find passion in. Stop hindering myself by thinking I need to have a big picture before I take the first steps. Yes. Yes, yes Matthew, you're welcome. Do it. Take the step. And tag me once you do it so I can see. <laughs> yeah, she is good about holding you accountable. So if if you say you're going to do something, don't don't tell Chanel if you don't want to be accountable for it. Because she'll be like, excuse me, what are you doing? What yep. are you doing? <laughs> Hence why I started doing videos because I was like, she's not gonna be in my DMs like VJ. What happened? Uh-uh. I'm like, she's not gonna done. yell at me. That's right. You get it done. Um, I mean, that was that was great advice. It was, it really was. Um, I'm sure that helped a lot of people because I I talked to my clients about that as well. And like you said, for me with the careers and the, the entrepreneurship part, it's like, yeah, for a lot of people, their next ultimate career leap is from employee to entrepreneur. Yeah. So it still is in line for me. Sometimes that part's more fun than the career part. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on the day for me too. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's definitely great, great, great advice. So we've talked about your sole purpose. We've talked about how to thrive in quarantine. Yes. Shiny um, um, so yeah. So, all right. So let's talk about having a little, little faith to get through the fears, right? Let's like, we're in these scary times, but some people are freaking out beyond belief and some people are just like, okay, stay calm. And I don't know if it's just like a lack of leadership or too much yeah. information that's inaccurate, people not sure what's accurate, but we just really need to remain calm and kind to each other and check on each other. You know, like when I saw Italy got quarantined, I was like, quarantine. I was like, okay, let me hit up Chanel, let me hit up Johnny, see how they're doing. I'm like, I got friends in Northern and Southern Italy. You guys all right? Yeah. You no. Know? So the thing is, when it comes to like fear and like what, especially what's going on in the world right now, you know, I think the first thing I would say to everyone is to take a deep breath, you know, like breathe. Like honestly, it might sound so like breathe. I'm breathing, I'm alive, I'm breathing. But like, I really mean pause and take a breath because scientifically and biologically, when we have a fear response in our body, our body is releasing cortisol and other histamine and other kinds of neurotransmitters in our bloodstream. It's just biology. It's normal. So you feel, af you feel afraid and your body releases a bunch of chemicals that say, oh my God, be on high alert. They're crazy. There's craziness going on. So even if you're somebody saying to you, calm down, you have all these chemicals flowing around in your body and they're actually causing your heart to beat faster. They're causing you to sweat. You know, they're causing, they're causing you to be on high alert. When you breathe, what you do is you take oxygen in and you exhale the excess toxins or the excess chemicals that your body doesn't need. So you're breathing in oxygen. And as you exhale, your body's releasing all these neurotransmitters and chemicals and, and things that don't help you first breathe breathe and then i want you to actually say okay how can i take precaution how can i take precaution because if i'm prepared 
I don't have to worry. Okay, well, they said that if you go out to public places, you can get it. All right, let me stay home. Okay, they say that if you go out, stay six feet, you know, a meter to six feet away from people, from others. Okay, I have no choice but to go out. Let me make sure I stay six feet away from others or a meter at least away from others, right? All right, they're saying that if I'm immunocompromised or if I'm over a certain age or if I have pre-existing conditions, I can, I'm higher, at a higher risk. Let me get me myself a mask. If I'm going to be locked up at home, let me make sure I have some entertainment. Let me make sure I have Chanel's Qu Thrival, Chanel's Quarantine Thrival Guide <laughs> to keep me company. You know, chanel.com for slash quarantine. Let me make sure that I have, um, you know, food. Food. Everyone's right. chasing toilet paper. Guys, if you don't have anything going in, there will be nothing coming out. <laughs> what are you eating? Get yourself some pasta. Get yourself some flour. Get yourself some sugar, some salt. Get yourself some basics. <laughs> okay, get yourself some food, right? And I also think you have to choose what you put into your field of vision. If you see headlines that give you that heart rate beating fast, you start to sweat, you start to feel afraid, close that tab and watch some funny memes. Right. Watch something inspiring. Watch a show. Do something else that will change the chemicals that are being secreted in your body. You are responsible for your <laughs> stimulus that you take in. You are responsible for that. Now, as it pertains to poor leadership and governments that aren't necessarily doing the best job, this is where you can self-lead. So maybe your mayor or your president or your prime minister, whoever has, has not put in the precautions, this is where you get to say, well, I'm not going to wait on my mayor or my leaders to do it. I'm going to take precautions. I'm going to inform myself. We live in a global world. I'm sure you have friends of friends who live in Italy or people who've been to China who are in Europe who are going through it and who are maybe a week ahead of you with the, with what's going on in terms of the effect of it, call them, mm -hmm. message them. I've gotten so many messages of friends who are in the online space who are like, Chanel, I have a hair salon and I'm wondering what do you think I should do? No, I'm not an expert, so I give them my thing, but I also give them a disclaimer. But I let them know how the virus works from my experience here. I let them know how the quarantine mm -hmm. works from my experience here. And I say to them, don't worry, like this is how it works. Now you have the information, you can make a, an informed decision. But right, firstly, right. breathe. Breathe. Right, right. And then plan, yeah, prepare, uh, and take precaution. The three Ps. Yes, yes. I agree with that. Like, you know, it's hard to find hand sanitizer. So I put soap in my car. Like I had a travel yeah. size um, body wash that was out. So I filled it with some soap. And when I go out, I put some hot water in a bottle and I take it with me and I went to Whole Foods because I also, um, one of my side hustles is I deliver for Amazon. So for all you people ordering from Amazon, like you might want to slow that down. It might get a little <laughs> crazy for a bit. <laughs> Sunday was a logistical nightmare because wow. of technical issues. And like in New York, 20% of the Amazon drivers called out sick. And they're the ones like they, they drive a van that says Amazon and these things hold like 200 plus packages and they wow. had to shift them over to what they call us as delivery partners. So they're yeah. putting like, Usually you get like 20 something packages that everybody was getting like 40, 50, 60 packages to make up for these vans not being there. And wow. even like I had to get some tech support because there was issues from Whole Foods and there was one guy to do tech support and he was part of a team of six and five of his team members called out. Yeah. So, handling, you know, what, things what are getting different. You give people like, how do you overcome? So basically I'm like, I, you know, I wash my hands. If I go in the store, if I come out the store, I wash my hands and I use gloves. You know, so even when I'm dropping off packages, um, I'm like, they're gloves and I drop them off and I drop them off. And then because I was like doing a hand sanitizer thing in between until I had got gloves. But now I'm like, great, I got gloves. So yeah. basically when I'm done with the shift, I just toss the gloves. Yeah. Um, before I eat anything, I make sure I wash my hands. Yeah. So, you know, I pulled over. And so like I was saying, I was at Whole Foods and I like opened my car door and I'm like washing my hands. And this lady's in a car next to me. And she's like, oh, I love that. She's like, so you got soap and water in your car. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. I was like, instead of trying to make hand sanitizer, like just carry some soap and water. Like if you've already yeah. brought soap, you you already got it. 
just, you know, use an empty bottle, put some water in it. And like, that's what I've been doing. And I try to keep my distance from people and, you know, like just, just keep my precautions. You know, I usually have a scarf on and I'll keep that over my mouth if I'm around people cause I don't have a mask. Um, but that's been it. And then like this week I might be home most of the week just so I can do some stuff for me. Cause I realized I was tired. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I take a lot of vitamin C, you know, so I'm just keeping like my vitamins up and doing different things. So as Matthew said, don't panic. We got this. Yeah. I think the, yeah. the, I don't, I don't get the toilet paper thing either. I was, I <laughs> was in the supermarket when they were just restocking, but even like a normal pack of toilet paper that should have been like maybe eight ninety nine was like $13. My sister told me like four rolls, $5. I was just like, what's going on? You were sending something from here? Like, it's crazy. Right. right. But, you know, yeah, but what I want to say too, BJ, is like, I want to remind everyone that as a human race, as a species of human beings, we've been through the Spanish flu of the 1918 to 20, in the 20s. We've been through the Holocaust. We've been through World Wars One and Two. We've been through 9-11. Yep. We've been through slavery. Like, we've been through so much. We've done a lot. We've been through a lot. We've been through SARS. We've been through Chick V. I remember people don't remember Chicken yep. V. Chick, Chick V. We've been through Zika. <laughs> we've been through yep. um, Ebola. Ebola. We've been through so much. So, swine flu. Yeah. Yeah. Catch, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. Like, Earth, yeah. the her earthquakes in Haiti tsunamis in yeah. Asia. we've been through a lot guys yeah. we're we're going to survive we will make it we're gonna thrive we're gonna make it gonna <laughs> yes make it. yeah yeah i think people fail to realize that it's like even i mean it's still a, it's still an issue it's still a serious issue it's not to be like oh lackadaisical but it is still like take some perspective like the amount of deaths is still small in comparison to some of these other things right and nobody's yeah. talking about how many people have recovered you know, yeah. the recovery rate is much higher than the death rate. But, so like but, here in New York, I'm, I'm happy for our governor because our governor has some sense. Yeah. And um, I know he's trying to put in drive through testing at one of the beaches because it has tons of parking and have like really yeah. large parking lots. And I'm like, that's perfect. You know, yeah. and it's like, you know, he's like I, when I when I watch like the lives of, of the governor talking, I'm like, oh, OK, we got somebody sane in charge. I'm OK. Yeah. Like he's like, let's we got a plan going like, let, you know, he's looking at other things. He's not worrying about what the federal is doing. He's like, we don't focus on what we can do. Yeah. So but even the regular it, it's good. Flu, the regular flu. Kills oh, yeah. Kills way more people. More than half a million people every year from the regular. Yeah. Flu. Yeah. You know? So we have yeah, to yeah, yeah. work so hard when you say perspective. That is the word. We have to put things in perspective. Take precaution. Take precaution because especially for people who are over a certain age, who are immunocompromised yes. and who have pre-existing conditions, they are at risk. We have to be aware and be alert and understand that. If you have somebody who is a family member who they are in that situation, encourage them to stay home. And, you know, if you mm -hmm. can take supplies for them, do that. But let us realize that there's a perspective, you know, half a million people right. and more from the regular flu every year. Yeah, we, we can make yeah, it. Guys. Yeah, yeah. And check in on, the, on the, the single people that live by themselves, right? Everybody's always like, oh, you know, spend time with your families. But there's a lot of people that don't have families. Yeah. So, you know, like I had a post about that, too. I'm like, you know what? If you know your neighbor lives by yourself and you're in an apartment building, slip a note under their door and be like, are you OK? Yeah. You know, play a game of tic-tac-toe with them, slide it, none, you know, something <laughs> like at some point we're going to be entertaining each other. Like what's what yeah. are people watching on Netflix? I mean, am I the only person that was watching? Like I watched Pandemic. I watched Outbreak, Containment. Listen, um, I watched, I watched the zombie show. Anyway. Like <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I'm like one of those people that's like prepared, like ultra prepared. Yes. I kind of had it. I'm like, all right intuition on what's going on here okay it's gonna spread globally let's watch pandemic on, on netflix so it's <laughs> like but watching it yeah. helped me to like not be as afraid because i understood kind of like you know the dynamics of right. how they work and everything right right yeah and then i watched zombie shows i used to watch the walking dead all the time i'm like i'm prepared for a zombie apocalypse i can handle this can i, I have can a friend I we have something? we have a whole plan we've had a plan in effect for like six years now because of the walking dead let me tell you something about a zombie thing. So here in Italy, we're under quarantine. I'm whispering because I don't want anyone to hear. But like, you're not supposed to leave your house. If you have a pet, you can take your pet for walks. But Carla and I, we were like locked in this house. We were on day six, so we were going, we we're going crazy. So we were like, all right, let's go take the dog for a walk. 
we didn't need to because we have a yard the dog can run in the yard but we said let's go guys i kid you not we went out we were walking for like three kilometers and it felt like we were in a zombie apocalypse like there was no humans not even a cat not even a dog there was nothing wow. on the road and you just had the cars parked up and i was just like but not in a scary way just like you know right wow weird kind of way. <laughs> and and then too because we we live beside the beach we were standing on the balcony and it just felt like you know when you you think about somebody the first set of humans before civilization and they were just on the right. coast and they're looking out and there's nothing i was just like in awe of what i was seeing i was just like wow this is right. what like the first set of humans experience silence right Jesus. yes no just nothing and it's 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 scary it's weird because we're so used to the noise but it's also so beautiful like i, I saw somebody post yesterday that now in china like the fog the smog has cleared and they can actually see the sky being blue again and they can hear right. birds chirping again when they haven't heard that in such a long time because of their use of so much noise and so there's still beauty taking place in spite of all you know that's going on maybe it's like a way for the earth to hear itself heal itself a little bit too because like with people quarantine like carbon footprints are going down like they've shown images from times square of like how empty times square is and it's not completely empty but yeah. for Times Square, it's empty. Yeah. It's like like 40 people in Times Square. And wow. you're like, there's never just 40 people in Times Square. You can go to Times Square at three in the morning and it is still packed. So, you know, you know, so it's just like seeing that. But like I'm happy I live in the suburbs. Um, so I'm not like smack in New York City. I'm an hour outside of it. Um, yeah. but you know, like the highways are definitely less people on it, which is good. You know, I think people need yeah. to handle that and maybe maybe worldwide will get to like the same level of of um hygiene yeah. you know like so everybody will always wash their hands like please wash your hands all the time not just during <laughs> illnesses like all the time all the time don't just <laughs> pick your nose and start flinging it and then start eating like wash your hands please yeah. like isn't this come on please 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 like <laughs> yes 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 well, I don't want to hold you up any longer unless we have any more questions. I really appreciated having you and talking about your soul purpose. Um, I think Matt had a really great question and it probably helped a lot of people. Um, I know some people just watch. They don't always engage and I love you anyway. Uh, but I think this was really good and everybody stay safe. You can tell she's here in Italy and, and she doesn't look like she's dying or anything. So <laughs> she's thriving. Darling. She's thriving well. And feel free to follow Shania. So tell them how they can follow you on all your social media. So on my social media, it's Shanil, S-H-A-N-E-I-L, official, on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Facebook. My page is Shanil official if you search it. But if you want to go to the link, it's facebook.com forward slash official Shanil. But literally, if you search Shanil official anywhere, you'll find me. Even the web, my website where I have my membership and stuff like that, it's Shanil official on all the places. Okay, perfect, perfect. I suggest you follow her. She does great videos. Um, she's wait, okay. Let's. I'm gonna say this one last thing about you before we go. She's very authentic, right? And you know, some people don't do different things. I mean, I've seen this chick like fixing wigs on, doing makeup, <laughs> and I'm like, what is she doing? You know, and just cracking up. Or like, I remember I was scrolling in my Facebook feed, and you were dancing. And I was like, what is she dancing to? I'm like scrolling by and all I see is her like, woo. And I'm like, okay, what is Chanel up to now? You know, like, and it's just like how you see her, that's how she is. So if you want to follow some authentic content that can definitely change your life, I definitely recommend following Chanel Official. Um, and thank you for being a guest. I, I definitely enjoyed having you. Thank you for everybody who watched. Thank you for your questions. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to message her separately. Um, yeah. And everybody have a great day. Remember to breathe and don't panic and be kind to each other. Yes. Thanks for having me. Right. This was so much fun. Yes, it was. Bye, everybody.